Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this, our first enterprise webinar. This is RSA Web's High Performance Remote Workforce webinar. It is our blueprint for success. We're so excited this morning uh, to share our story with you. Our speakers today are Rudy van Staden, JC Strafford, Sean Rose, Chris Meiber, and Leonor Lotz. Let's get started. Our first speaker today is Rudy van Staden, our CEO, who helps us meet every challenge that we currently face. His insights, experience, and perspective help us to deliver the very best in customer experience. Over to you, Rudy. Uh, thanks very much. For the intro schools. Um, thank you very much for everyone joining today um, to, as we go through um, how we pivoted to from a predominantly office based to a remote workforce uh, overnight. Um, so before we start and get into the detail, let's just take a, a quick step back and just look at the South African space as a whole. You know, guys, COVID has most likely well, has pushed us forward two to three years um, from a remote working perspective. Our, our peers in the US UK, for them to make this kind of shift wasn't really fundamental. They've been doing it for, for quite some time now. For us, we've had to do this within weeks. So we've had, it's been far more challenging in the South African flavor of things um, to overcome, overcome those hurdles from a connectivity perspective. Our behavioral changes are, are happening quite fast. We, we are seeing a massive increase in internet usage as we see um, demand for streaming services increase and, and that type of thing and now this has also moved into the remote working space where now we have to do this this type of working and i see that as a good thing so we we're going to come to this point anyway in, in a couple of years time and this has just accelerated that, that that process and so there's many benefits from from a from a business perspective when you look at it from cost saving we're going to see office spaces start to get smaller we're going to see more flexible working areas Due to more people doing online meetings, your, your travel costs are going to reduce and, and that type of thing. On the other side, uh, many businesses are worried about uh, productivity. You know, is my productivity going to suffer? Am I going to get the same output from, from my teams? And if you implement remote working correctly and enable them with the right tools, um, the inverse is actually true. You'll start to see your productivity increase. And so strategically, longer term, having a, a remote workforce that can move between their home, their office, or other spaces is actually a big advantage to, to the business. It will give you a lot more flexibility in the way you do operations and, and that type of thing. So longer term is something differently I think businesses should look at doing. And there's a way to, to, to do that. So looking at it uh, from RSA web, RSA web perspective, 
For those of you that don't know um, our company, um, we're a very innovative tech company. We have offices based in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Uh, we service a multitude of customers uh, nationally across across the country and offer services, whether it's cloud, mobile, connectivity, security, etc. And so we do all these, these really great technical products, but at the same time, guys, at the inside to support our customers we also have a finance department and hr department and so on and so not everyone is is a technical engineer which i'm sure many of you can relate to in your businesses and maybe so that's also the concern a lot, a lot of companies have is my teams are technical how are they going to work remotely and that should be taken off the table uh, you shouldn't need to be technical in any way shape or form to have a successful remote remote workforce and that's something we've done here, here at RSA Web quite, quite well. And you need to, so the, the challenge is how do you enable your team to do that? How do you get them to be successful uh, remotely? And so one of the key things you need to do to do everyone is you need to keep your teams informed, keep communication open. You need to give them confidence and you need to give them the right tools. And one a few of these critical tools that you need to give is connectivity. No matter where they are, they need to be able to connect to their services and their systems that they do in the office. And you know, as a business, we need to be sensitive to everyone's um, personal circumstances are different. Not everyone has a spare room. Not everyone has access to fiber. So we managed to provide people with different connectivity options, uh, whether it be mobile data or maybe fixed LTE. Depending on what that person's role was, there was an option there. And so when you provide them with that connectivity and now all of a sudden they are able to sit at their PC at home or, or their laptop rather and access their services just as they did in the office, that gives them the, the confidence to, to start, start this process growing. Um, you need to ensure your systems are also cloud-based. You know, this is another critical element. So at RSA Web, we naturally have everything in web browser, cloud-based, so everyone could access information at any time from anywhere, and it would be the same experience whether they're sitting at home or sitting in front of the of the PC at the, PC at, uh, at the office. And one of the other things just to think about is, you know, our old friend load shedding isn't isn't going anywhere. It's going to be coming back. So you know, at RSA Web, we've ensured we've invested so much in our infrastructure from a load shedding perspective, so we, we're very prepared for that. Um, but it's now your, your worker at home because, you know, your offices are generally set up for load shedding. How do you prepare your work at home? So little things like you ensure that you, offer, you issue them a laptop, you know, so they have battery power. The connectivity options you give them are battery powered and that type of thing. And these will keep people connected going forward, not just now, but going forward when, when load shedding hits and when it comes back. Um, and so when you empower people with the right information as they go on to say, guys, these are the tools you're going to have. You're going to be able to connect. You're going to have access to your systems. You'll see that confidence grow in your workforce. And when you give them the right platforms to communicate with each other and feel part of the organization, that confidence grows even more. And that's what we did here at RSA Web. So when the guys went home and they switched on on day one, they logged on, it was as if they were in the office. Um, you would have little group chats and that type of thing going and you have a little morning hello, like you're having a coffee. Um, and that really starts bringing the organization together and you'll, what would happen is you actually see your productivity increase. So when we did the switch, uh, not only did we have to maintain our status quo of delivering the service we did to our customers, but there was a massive influx in, in demand, right? With, as we said earlier about streaming services increasing, internet usage on our trip, um, increasing. So we needed to actually up our productivity by about a good 20, 30% to meet that demand without any impact to, to our customers. And that was very, very important we achieved that. And I'm very proud to say we achieved that seamlessly using the, the products we're going to talk about today and the steps and procedures we, we went through. So that's enough from me. So thank you again to everyone from, from joining. We'll hand over to the, the rest of the team. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. Next up is JC Strafford, who brings over 25 years of mobile industry experience to RSA Web sharing her knowledge and her perspective and helping us to better understand our mobile needs. This morning though, she's having some power issues, which is just one of the problems that we generally face when we're working in a remote situation. And so Kurs Meiberg, our head of engineering, uh, will be taking over from her on this particular topic. Kurs Meiberg has a depth and breadth of um, technical knowledge that allows us to field the right products to meet the ever-changing needs of our clients, helping their businesses to grow. Chris, over to you.
Thank you very much, Skolz. Um, yeah, so uh, like I already explained, uh, when, you, when you launch a work from home strategy, it, um, obviously there's a few challenges that you have to overcome. One of them were the connectivity mediums, uh, the different connectivity mediums that are available to our staff. Some of our staff have fathers, some of our staff, unfortunately, are still on ADSL, and some don't have any ADSL connectivity at all. So we're in the fortunate position that we have a mobile data product that's available on multiple networks. And this allowed us to, depending on this uh, mobile coverage, uh, able to um, allocate SIM cards to, to different employees uh, so they can actually access the internet. Um, all of this is basically done from our mobile data management portal, which is a centralized dashboard where we can allocate data, which is pulled to different, uh, to different employees. So from a cost perspective, it becomes uh, really cost effective because you've got the single data pool and you can either allocate one, five or 10 gigs to one employee. And as the, obviously, uh, the usage pattern changes, you can uh, increase that cap over time. We've also launched uh, our fixed LTE product quite recently. Um, and the big difference between our mobile data product and our fixed LTE product is that uh, the fixed LTE product can't be moved, but it offers a significant amount of increase in speed just based on the 4x4 MIMO um, routers that we use on the MTN network. So we've seen recently a couple of users that were located in Paul. Uh, where they could only get four megs of ADSL connectivity, suddenly have 50, 60, 70 megs of, of, of connectivity. So a massive improvement in speed. Um, I'm going to hand over to the rest of the team who's going to dive into cloud. Thank you, Chris. And now on to Sean Rose. Sean Rose is our cloud product specialist. He has an effortless ability to understand both the technical and strategic needs of our clients, uncovering the true problem and pairing it with the right solution. Over to you, Sean. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for the time. Um, One moment. So RSA Web is also a uh, cloud infrastructure as a service provider. Uh, we partner with a number of global leaders, and these partnerships enable us to build solutions and provide services that ensure remote workforces, including our own, uh, can do so successfully. So whilst we have run all of our own business systems, uh, out of our own cloud stack for a long time, the success criteria remains the same. And that is, are we delivering a high performance and seamless user and customer experience? Is our environment able to scale according to workload without incurring downtime? And is our business data secure and recoverable? So on these points, the scale and scope of our cloud services capabilities, as well as the rest of our vendor ecosystem uh, becomes really important. As a national service provider and a technology partner, we present our VMware cloud platforms from two regional availability zones. And this, in, this enables a number of solution build scenarios for, for us and for our customers. Uh, furthermore, our partnership with Veeam uh, enables the use of intelligent uh, or their intelligent data management product suite and the instant recovery of virtual machines as well as the granular file level recovery uh, across regions via the management console is invaluable uh, during a recovery process, not to mention the importance of uh, compliancy with data management legislation. Uh, New Relic uh, provides us with uh, a very different tool set, enabling us to real-time performance monitor, manage, and alert across all of our various application stacks. Um, and this allows us to be very agile in response to application errors and performance issues. And uh, lastly, our Cloudflare 
partnership uh, enables us to leverage the content delivery tools, uh, improve web service experiences, and most importantly, to protect our environment from internet-based threats. So there, there are a number of uh, uh, these. These are a number of technology building blocks uh, required for remote workforces to be successful, and uh, I think the the holistic view uh, is that this product stack coupled with um, mobile uh, data product stack and uh, the rest of the uh, speakers that are to come um, will kind of bring it together as a, as a solution. So uh, over to you, Skolz. Thank you, Sean. So next up, we have, are diving back into our security and work solution with Chris Mayberg. Chris, over to you. Thank you, uh, Sean and Skulls. So yeah, when we kicked off our work from home strategy, like I explained, uh, we obviously issued a lot of our uh, um, employees with mobile data cards um, and that we managed with the mobile data platform. Uh, in order to secure and obviously reduce the overall usage of those users, we deployed uh, those users on a private APN with a 14 net firewall in front of the APN. And this is a great tool uh, that we've implemented for various other customers that reduces the overall data consumption by um, blocking certain um, high intensive, intensive applications and also increasing product productivity by blocking social media and, for example, Netflix. So this was one of the key tools to ensuring high productivity for, for a lot of our users. So once we've had everyone connected, we use the existing uh, Fortinet perimeter security, um, which is deployed in front of our web applications and office network. And like most companies, we just had to issue remote VPN accounts uh, for all our users to dial into, uh, into our office network. So once we've had all our users on the VPN, connectors, a VPN connection to access our back office applications, uh, we could basically maintain end-to-end -end security uh, while our employees are working with customer-sensitive customer data. This is also a very great tool if you want to measure uh, employee productivity or any possible threats that, that might um, hit your employees uh, when they are working remotely. Uh, all were done from the Fortinet suite. Uh, once we, we had all our users uh, working remotely, uh, we use our cloud-based PABX, which is 3CX, um, to ensure that uh, all our users are able to interact with cu customers uh, over the phone. Uh, the Cloud PABX allows us for easy switch between a desk phone uh, and a soft phone. There's a lot of support staff to roll, uh, support staff to roll out soft phones on employee laptops as well as mobile phones. We trust this pl platform so much that we were able to move our customer service desk remotely. With the best web-based uh, switchboard, it made it really easy for all the inbound and outbound call management between staff while they're actually in different locations. All in uh, 3CX contributed to our overall work from home success. Um, I'm going to hand over to Leonor, which will give giving us an overview of uh, our work from home culture. Thank you, Chris. Next up is Leonor Lotz, who leads both the enterprise and sales teams, as well as the projects teams. She has elevated the enterprise sales team to new heights, crafting a truly expert group of dynamic salespeople. Leonor, over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, so yes, while we found that it was vital and very important to enable our staff to work remotely with all the right tools, 3CX, um, cloud-based systems, as well as mobile data and home connectivity, um, none of that is really valuable without the uh, work from home culture that we've established and, and really getting those team dynamics right. So. Through our experience, we found that these 
have been uh, sort of our key findings. So how to establish a work from home culture? We really found that sticking to a routine was important. So things for that became quite important are establishing daily routines, weekly routines, and even monthly routines. So for example, we have a company-wide stand-up on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. led by Rudy, our CEO. Uh, every morning at 8.30, my sales team and my product specialists touch base at 8.30. And that just really kicks off the, the tone of the day um, and, and just keeps everybody on the same page. It creates that momentum, that motivation. And we also just touch base with each other, find out how everyone's doing. Um, and that's that's become quite vital and quite important for um, our, our team dynamics. Um, it's also really important as part of the work from home culture to encourage balance. So things like getting outside and exercising, having a demarcated space in your house, you might not have a spare room, but you know, having a demarcated desk that you are working from and really establish a space that you are uh, sort of as your work area. Um, you know, we all have other things that we need to attend to, whether it be kids or relatives, um, pets, those kind of things. If you need to go out to the shop, it's really important to just sort of force that kind of transparency with your team. So if you are stepping away from your desk and you're running off to the shop, you know, during your typical work day, um, it's important just to touch base and say, hi, guys, I'm going to be away from my desk for the next hour. Um, and, and that kind of forced transparency really does build trust and rapport within the team. Um, the next thing that we found really important was to be deliberate about re establishing relationships, building those relationships, whether it be with customers uh, and especially internally. So, you know, typically in your office environment, you sit next to people, you've got that water cooler moment where you're grabbing a cup of coffee. Uh, and, and when you're working from home, you kind of lose that personal touch. But what we've been doing is we establish um, coffee dates via Zoom or, or Skype, and we really are finding out about um, how people are, are, are establishing a new norm for themselves. And some of the challenges that we're facing are shared, and it's quite important to, to continue to build those relationships. Um, very importantly is, is also not to micromanage and just to empower our staff with the right tools um, and, and, and also just trust that, uh, that, that the systems that you have in place are going to do the right reporting for you and are going to be reliable. Um, and, and in fact, that has increased our productivity. So we found that our talk time on 3CX has, uh, you know, almost doubled. In, in fact, I think it's, um, it's sort of up by, by four times as much. And um, as well as the productivity within the, um, within my team, within the enterprise team, you're really finding that a productivity is increasing because people are having to self-manage and really establish their own routines and kind of a, a new norm for themselves that works. Um, and then lastly, everyone knows, uh, and it's always talked about, is communication. Um, and it's always easier said than done. Communication is so vital. And whether you use, and what we found is that we've actually had to use different uh, platforms, whether it's video, sometimes you want to see someone face to face. Uh, sometimes it's voice. In the morning, we ask stand up, for example, is just a, a, a 3CX call where everybody dials in um, and it's kind of like a conference call. And um, and whether it's mail or, or Slack, and you kind of get those um, those informal channels going. So we have a company wide chat platform that we use. Um, sometimes it's for formal purposes to inform everyone of updates and and keep everyone in the on the same page. And sometimes it's informal. I mean, we've got a, a pets channel, for example, where everyone shares funny videos of their you know their animals doing crazy things daily. Um, and it, it's it's really important to encourage that transparency via uh, you know via any forms of communication, especially as we've seen we've had new joiners during this time, um, and so those forms of communication become really important. You know we we have to train these uh, new joiners. I think we recently this past week had about uh, you know a, a few six or eight new joiners that we actually needed to train via um, uh, you know our platforms. And keeping that transparency and, and that sort of productivity open via communication tools. Um, and then also when we have, have people leave, we've created videos um, and sent it to them just, you know, say, bidding them farewell. Because we're not able to do our typical, you know, send off, whether it be a sort of um, party or, you know, sort of lunch date that we would have normally done. And then we also have our committees that we've kind of transferred over. So we've got like a fun police who um, ensure continuous participation for new and existing staff. 
Um, and that kind of ensures that we have uh, a certain committee that establishes um, involvement and participation. So things like beer o'clock that we have at four o'clock every Friday. Um, you know, we've, we've had Easter over lockdown. So we have certain like, um, you know, prizes and, and competitions that were run. And it was really important to keep our staff engaged by having these committees that we just established, we've, we've had them, um, but we need to ensure that they kind of continue to, to, to uh, work and, and have these sort of informal engagements. Um, so these have been our findings. I mean, we are still learning as we go, but most importantly, we've been incredibly productive. We've been working really hard during this time, but we've also been having a lot of fun. And uh, that's really been key for us. And, um, and, and, and yeah, so I just want to thank everyone for joining. Um, and hopefully something like this would work within your organizations as well. All right. Thanks, Skultz. Over to you. Thank you, Leonor. Uh, we have a great uh, question in the chat group. Uh, why did we choose 3CX? Uh, Chris, this is a great one for you. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Skulls. Um, so the driving force behind choosing uh, 3CX was it was a cloud-based BBX, which means we could guarantee uh, the platform uptime uh, when we hosted it on our cloud. And also had a very sim simplified soft phones that we can roll on uh, to any Mac or um, Windows machine. And it's got both Android and iOS support. Uh, I know most of the other platforms out there, typically you either have to purchase the add-on, but uh, 3CX had that uh, available off the shelf. And also what made it very useful from a remote working perspective is the web-based client that helps with the call management. Um, that re it's, it really helps in terms of um, actually transferring between um, uh, agents and also from a, from a call center perspective to see how many uh, users or customers we have in the call queue. And then lastly, from a reporting perspective, um, it really gives our management and our service desk manager the tools they need to ensure that uh, we hit our SLAs uh, in terms of hold time as well as um, specific callbacks that uh, customers might request. And all these features are all included uh, in, in one license with, with 3CX. Awesome, thank you, Chris. There's a, another few questions coming up. Uh, Chris wants to know, I think this is directed at you, Lionel, how do you optimize productivity? High school. Um, yeah, so I mean, if there are a few things that you need to do, you really need to plan out your days uh, and your weeks. Um, you really need to ensure that you are scheduling um, not too many conference calls. You know, those they, they is the same way that meetings eat up time. You need to ensure that you are, uh, if you do have a meeting that they and a, and a conference call that they have agendas and that you actually um, fulfilling those specific tasks at hand. Um, ensure that um, your, your, your sort of agenda is laid out for your day, your week, and your month. Um, and then, you know, you kind of batch your tasks together. So um, whatever, your, whatever your, your role comprises of, it's important that you are actually ticking off those, because I think we all have lists, but we, you actually need to be getting through your, um, your tasks at hand. Um, and then it's also really important, you know, they say that the average employee spends about 13 hours um, glancing at their phone, um, you know, keeping an eye on emails, keeping an eye on chat channels. It's really important as well that it becomes productive time, not just, you know, that kind of dormant time that you spend in front of your PC. Um, and then also taking breaks. So it's just really impor Im important to plan your days out properly, plan your um, weeks out pro properly. Um, and then also just ensure that you're using the technology that you have at hand, um, ensuring that you are scheduling your tasks, ensuring that you are using the right um, technology tools, you know, like you are using your um, uh, 3CX, etc. cetera. Um, so that, that's been some, some of our learnings. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Leonor, there's a few more that are popping up in the chat. So let's just have a look quick. Um, 
Yuan would like to know, uh, what have you learned works well when assigning tasks to work from home workforces and managing feedback and follow up with and dealing with the dynamics of a sort of change in priorities? Sorry, what have you learned works well assigning tasks to work from home workforce and managing feedback? Change priorities. Uh, look, I mean, similarly in the environment where you were to work from home or work in, in the office, um, managing your workforce, as I said, what I'm finding, and I've got quite a big team, is you need to touch base every morning with the team and ensuring that you're bringing up vital um, uh, sort of, we, you know, sort of vital topics that are priorities to the team so that you're not boring the whole team with individual priorities. So if you are, for example, talking about, you know, billing, billing is going out at a certain point in the month, or if you're releasing new products, those kind of things are vital across the team. But then you are, then you need to schedule individual time as well. Um, certain things as well that we've made important to people is if you are at your desk and you're working, your status on your Slack, for example, needs to say that you are online. If you're stepping away from your desk, you actually need to say that you are that you are away. Um, so that if you are online, we actually, well, me specifically, I actually expect a response because you have now stated that you are online. It's similar to being at your desk. So um, those kind of statuses also become very important. Um, I hope that answered your question, Johan. Uh, let me know if there was something... Yeah, and you said of deal with the dynamics of change in priorities. Um, I think it is a very different environment when you're working from home. And I think um, it, it's important that each individual kind of work um, strategy and, and role it understands that their priorities uh, don't necessarily change. Well, for my team, have not necessarily changed. You know, we still have a sales team that needs to onboard a, a certain amount of um sales and I have a project team that still needs to onboard certain projects during the month. We just need to understand that certain suppliers are not necessarily working during this time. So it, it's also kind of dealing with the macro, macro environment. I hope that answers that question. Okay, that is a good question, Kate. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a, it says, so just Kate's question says, Leonel said that we shouldn't micromanage, but we have found that some staff can work productively no matter where they are. And some st staff mess around and slack off because they think that they're not being watched. What should you do to suggest? So that's very important. Uh, I have very clear KPIs for my staff. Um, so everybody knows that at, at, you know, on a Friday, when we do our sales stand up, everybody has a certain amount of tasks, activities that need to be logged um by friday at three o'clock so we for example we we use our desk system our ticketing system and you need to have sure that all your tickets are closed off um by three o'clock on a friday um so you can't really hide behind metrics so the metrics are very important case so also just I don't know what your systems are that you are using and the, and your reporting, but it really does come down to, you know, we've got 3CX that has amazing um, insight into the talk time. So 3CX gives me a, a report every morning about unanswered calls, incoming calls, outgoing calls per extension. And that extension is assigned to a person. Um, so you can really see the talk time per person. Um, you can see who's not answering their calls. Um, you can see who's making a lot of calls. So we have seen that a lot of uh, talk time has gone up. Um, I hope that answers your question. It really does boil down to metrics. Okay. Um, we also we also ensure that people have three major goals for the week, and they actually share those with the team. So, for example, if people have certain uh, projects that they're working on, they either have a project that they have to finish at the end of the week. Um, or they have um, uh, have to give an update. So it's really not about me holding them accountable. We have team accountability. So in terms of our culture, we've got something that we say, you have single point of accountability, but you have shared responsibility. And if you have that shared responsibility model and one person is letting another down, it's really important to communicate that across the company. Yeah. So just I want to repeat that we have single point of accountability, but shared responsibility. Okay. Thank you, Leonor. Um, right. 
Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Um, we, I just wanted to thank all of you for attending today, our first webinar. Um, I think it went really well. And thank you, for all our presenters, for sharing their insights. Um, I hope it's been illuminating. And we look forward to the next ones.